a surge in spirit and an awakening in intelligence. The Founding of Baghdad, 762 In 762 the second ruler of the newly ascendant Abbasid dynasty moved the capital of the powerful Islamic Caliphate from Damascus to the newly founded city of Baghdad. The move is often seen as marking the beginning of an Islamic golden age in which science, art, and culture flourished. The extent of Muslim technological development was demonstrated in 802 when the Abbasid Caliph Harun al-Rashid dispatched an embassy to the Frankish ruler, Charlemagne, which included the gift of a water clock that chimed the hours by dropping brass balls onto symbols at the mechanism's base. This sophisticated timepiece was just one of the advances the Arabs had made, advances that left their European counterparts far behind. The Rise of the Abbasids After the death of the Prophet Muhammad in 632, his successors ruled over a growing Islamic empire, or caliphate. Following the murder in 744 of the Caliph al-Walid, a member of the Umayyad family that had ruled from Damascus since 661, civil war broke out, ending only when the Abbasid dynasty came to power in 750. The Abbasids spent their first decade pacifying the empire, with the help of troops from Khorasan in northeastern Iran. These troops, a mixture of Arab speakers, Persians, and Central Asians, had been among the Abbasids' principal backers and had provided them with a power base independent of the Arab tribes based in northern Arabia, Syria, and Iraq who had supported the Umayyads. It was in part to provide land for his Khorasani soldiers that al-Mansur, the second Abbasid caliph, established the city of Baghdad in 762. He chose the site for its mild climate and its location on the trade routes between Persia, Arabia, and the Mediterranean. It was also just 20 miles to the southeast of the Persian royal seat at Ctesiphon, which it soon eclipsed, enabling the new dynasty to portray themselves as masters of a culture that stretched back to Cyrus the Great in the 6th century. The heart of the new capital was a mile wide, circular enclosure in which sat the caliphal palace and main government offices. Search for Knowledge the Abbasids laid claim not only to their predecessors' political heritage, but also to their cultural and scientific achievements. Although the Umayyad Empire had included ancient seats of Greek learning such as Alexandria in Egypt, under their rule there had been little sponsorship of scientific endeavor. This changed under the Abbasids, who spent their time consolidating Islamic rule rather than on campaigns of conquest. They sponsored scholars to explore knowledge gained from foreign works, rather than relying solely on the guidance found in the Quran and the Hadiths, the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. The earliest advances were made in medicine. During the mid to late 6th century, a philosophical school at Gondish Hapair in southwestern Iran became a center of medical scholarship. It was staffed mainly by Christians from the Nestorian sect, which had been persecuted in the Byzantine Empire. In 765, Al-Mansur is said to have summoned staff member Jerji Sibn Jibril ibn Bakhtishu to Baghdad to diagnose a stomach complaint. So pleased was the caliph with his treatment that he prevailed upon Jerjis to stay on as his personal physician, and for eight generations until the mid-11th century, members of the Bakhtishu family occupied the position at the Baghdad court bringing with them knowledge of Greek and Hellenistic texts and medical practices. In 800, Caliph Harun al-Rashid asked Jibril ibn Bakhtishu, Jurgis's grandson, to head the new hospital in Baghdad, the first in the Islamic world. Al-Mansur established a library in Baghdad to house his collection of manuscripts. This venture was made easier by the Arab adoption of paper as a medium for books and the establishment in Baghdad in 795 of a paper mill. However, since Arabic speakers had no access to this learning, the library did little to advance an indigenous Arab scientific tradition. House of Wisdom To remedy this, Harun al-Rashid, caliph from 786 to 809, and al-Mamun, reigned 813-833 established the Beit al-Hikmah, House of Wisdom, which not only housed the growing library, 
but also acted as an academy for scholars and a center for the translation of key scientific works into Arabic. Among its leading scholars were Hunayn ibn Ishaq, 808-873, an Astorian Christian from al Hira in Iraq, who translated more than 100 mostly medical and philosophical works, and Thabit ibn Qura, a member of a pagan sect known as the Sabaeans, who translated elements, Euclid's great work on geometry, and the Almagest, Ptolemy's key work on astronomy. Translation became a highly prestigious endeavor. One Arab patron paid an extravagant 2,000 dinars a month to ensure his association with a translation of a work by the Greek physician Galen, a dinar, made of pure gold, weighed the same as 72 grains of barley. Within around 150 years, almost all of the key Greek texts that had been discovered had been rendered into Arabic. Many of them were not available in Western Europe at all, and even if they had been, knowledge of Greek had all but disappeared there. The Muslim world was therefore well set by around 850 to build on the scientific traditions of classical and Hellenistic Greeks transmitted and developed under the Roman Empire, and to acquire a centuries-long lead over Christian Western Europeans. Complex Calculations an understanding of mathematics and astronomy is essential to the calculation of the times at which Muslims must observe their five daily prayers, times that varied widely across the vast Islamic empire, therefore both disciplines were studied assiduously. Another, separate, intellectual tradition contributed to the development of these calculation techniques, arriving in 771 with a delegation of Hindu scholars. The scholars were visiting Al-Manzur's court, which in itself illustrates the comparative openness and tolerance of the early Abbasids, and brought with them India's relatively advanced mathematics, including the use of trigonometry to help solve algebraic equations. Crucially, the Hindu mathematicians also employed a decimal notation, which one of the members of the House of Wisdom, al khwarizmi c.78-130 adopted and described in the book of addition and subtraction according to Hindu calculation. Furthermore, al khwarizmi also explained a method of calculating the square roots of numbers, and pioneered work on algebraic equations. He and his fellow scholars made rapid strides in geometry, taking as their starting point Euclid's and Archimedes's work on spheres and cylinders. Astronomy and Medicine al khwarizmi compiled the first known tables of daily prayer times at Baghdad. His calculations assisted by direct astronomical observation. The early Islamic astronomers drew from Ptolemy's Almagest, adopting his view that the Earth was at the center of the solar system, and that the planets rotated around it along the lines of eight spheres. They also learned from Hindu astronomers, translating and perfecting Indian Zij or tables of planetary positions, and continued to refine Ptolemy's system, only occasionally, as in the work of the 10th century astronomer Al-Biruni, toying with a heliocentric system that had the Sun at its center. Their calculations were made simpler when in the mid-8th century they adopted the astrolabe, an instrument in which the celestial sphere was projected onto a flat plane marked with latitude and longitude lines. By the 13th century, Islamic astronomy was at its zenith, and in 1259 a great observatory was constructed at Maraga in eastern Iran. Here Nasr al-Din al-Tusi and his successors made fine adjustments to account for slight discrepancies in the orbit of the planets, assisted by mechanical clocks that enabled them to record their observations in fine detail. Muslim scholars made advances in many other areas, too, first building on the base of Greek manuscripts translated into Arabic, and then making their own discoveries. They did not accept the theories of the ancients uncritically. al haytham died 1039, produced a key work, the Book of Optics, in which he speculated that sight was the result of light traveling from an object to the eye, rather than the other way around as Ptolemy had theorized. Arab physicians continued to make progress, combining their practical observations with theoretical analysis. Al-Razi, died 925, produced the first description of smallpox and measles, as well as compiling a medical compendium that began a tradition of such encyclopedias, culminating in the canon of medicine by Ibn Sina, 
who was known as Avicenna in the West, composed around 1015. It included separate sections for diseases that are specific to one body part, and those that afflict the body as a whole. Islamic Science Spreads the Islamic expansion that began in the mid-70th century not only absorbed ancient centers of learning such as Alexandria, but also brought the Muslim world to the fringes of Western Europe through the conquest of Spain, from 711, and Sicily, from 827. A tradition of Islamic learning embedded itself in both areas, and particularly in the Iberian Peninsula, known to the Arabs as Al-Andalus. The court established there in 756 by Abd al-Rahman I, a refugee Umayyad prince who had escaped the Abbasid revolution, became a magnet for scholars from the east, and its libraries became a repository of precious ancient texts that had been translated into Arabic. In 967, the French cleric and scholar Gerbert of Aurillac, who in 999 would become Pope Sylvester II, arrived in Spain for a three-year period of study at a monastery in Catalonia. There he had access to manuscripts that had filtered over the border from Muslim-held Al-Andalus. He took back to France knowledge of Arabic technology such as the water clock and the astrolabe, and of a type of abacus that used a decimal system. This was the first example of the systems used in medieval Europe. It was a small beginning and one paralleled in southern Italy where a medical school was established at Salerno in the 9th century. A few Islamic manuscripts reached the school in the early years, but many more arrived in the late 11th century when Muslim Dr. Constantine the African returned from Kair Arawan in Tunisia. He had gone there to study medicine, and brought back with him works such as The Complete Art of Medicine by Ali ibn al-Abbas al-Majusi, known in the West as Hali Abbas parts of which he then translated into Latin. This translation gave Western doctors and scholars access to comparatively advanced Muslim medical knowledge. Classical Greek texts arrived directly from the Byzantine Empire to the West, in particular Pisa, which had a trading quarter in Constantinople, including works by the philosopher Aristotle. The main channel for the transmission of Islamic learning into Europe, however, continued to be Spain. As Islamic Spain shrank, pressurized by the Reconquista, the flow of materials accelerated. The Christian Reconquest spread increasingly into Muslim Emirates until, in 1085, Alfonso VI of Castile captured Toledo. The city became a center for the translation of Arabic works by an international group including the Englishman Herbert of Caen, Slav Hermann of Carinthia, the Frenchman Raymond of Marseille, Jewish scholar Abraham Ibn Ezra, and Italian Gerard of Cremona. In the mid-12th century, the group translated many Arabic texts into Latin, including works on mathematics, medicine, and philosophy. Western Europe now had access to Ptolemy's Almagest, and to the medical works of Galen, as well as access to new works by Arabic writers who had built on or summarized the work of their ancient predecessors, such as Ibn Sina's Canon of Medicine. This five-book encyclopedia became one of the most widely used treatises in European medical schools until the 16th century. Royal Patronage this transmission of knowledge to the West mirrored the process by which the Islamic world had absorbed Greek learning during the great period of translation into Arabic in the 9th and 10th centuries. Noble and royal patrons played similar roles in both phases of the transmission. King Roger II of Sicily, which by 1091 had been reconquered from the Muslims, invited Arab scholar Al-Idrisi to his court in 1138 with a commission to construct a map of the world based on Islamic geographical and cartographic works. The result, which took more than 15 years to complete, was by far the most accurate world map yet available to Europeans, and showed areas as far east as Korea. The map was accompanied by the Book of Pleasant Journeys into Faraway Lands in which Alidrasi's royal patron could have read of wondrous things such as cannibals in Borneo, and the gold trade in Ghana. A Tradition of Learning Roger's grandson Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor from 1220 until 1250, 
continued his grandfather's tradition of sponsoring translations of Arabic texts. A remarkable polymath who knew at least four languages, Roger so impressed his contemporaries with his learning that he became known as Stupamundi, the marvel of the world. Among his protégés were the Scottish scholar Michael Scott, who translated key works of Aristotle on zoology, and the person Leonardo Fibonacci, who had been sent by his merchant family to study mathematics at Bauchi in Muslim North Africa. There Fibonacci learned of the decimal system, and in 1202 he published the Book of Calculations, the most detailed account yet seen in Europe of the Arabic system of numbering. By the early 13th century, the Abbasid Empire had all but collapsed. The difficulties of ruling such a far-flung empire and the effects of a series of civil wars had led to key provinces such as Spain, Tunisia, and Egypt breaking away to be ruled by their own caliphs. Even in Baghdad, where the Abbasid caliphs clung on. They were only notionally sovereign. Real power was held by other dynasties such as the Shia Buyids, and, from 1055, the Seljuks, a Turkish group originating in Central Asia. The final blow was dealt by the Mongols, who surged westward into the Islamic world in the early 13th century. In 1258, the Mongol great Khan Mongk unleashed an army against Iraq which laid siege to and then sacked Baghdad, inflicting an appalling massacre on its inhabitants. The last ruling Abbasid Caliph al-Mustasim was executed, and political and cultural leadership of the Islamic world passed first to the Mamluks in Cairo and then, after their conquest of Egypt in 1517, to the Ottoman Turks. By this time Europeans had rediscovered Greek and Roman learning in almost every field of scholarship through the medium of Arabic texts. It had taken centuries for the new material to be absorbed, and a further wave of interest in classical manuscripts in the 15th century to spark the Renaissance in Europe. The House of Wisdom founded by the Abbasid Caliphs had played a key role in ensuring the survival of Greek and Roman science in the Islamic world allowing its transmission centuries later to Christian Europe. Harun al-Rashid Harun, 763-809, succeeded as caliph in 783 after the mysterious death of his older brother al-Hadi, who had reigned for just one year. For the first 20 years of his reign, the Barmakid family, who helped strengthen a powerful central administration, dominated court. Under Harun's rule, Baghdad became the most powerful city in the Islamic world, and flourished as a center of knowledge, culture, invention, and trade. Even so, for almost two decades Harun based himself at Raqqa, closer to the frontiers of the Byzantine Empire, against which he launched a raid in 806, personally commanding an army of many thousands. Harun's gift of an elephant to Charlemagne in 802 was part of a series of diplomatic exchanges with the Frankish court that were intended to put further pressure on the Byzantines. Harun's House of Wisdom, a translation bureau, library, and academy for scholars and intellectuals from across the empire, contributed to his nickname Al-Rashid, the Just. He died in 809 while on an expedition to Khorasan in the northeast of Iran.